Hi there, welcome to today's lesson. Uh, today we're going to be covering Unit 1, Lesson 5. Uh, we're going to be discussing overflow and rounding. Uh, we'll be building on some of the stuff that we that we uh, worked on in our previous lesson with our flippy doos and the binary system. So if you haven't completed that lesson, uh, be sure to X out of this one and go back to the previous video. All right. So for today's warm up, here's your prompt. Imagine you work at a local store. Uh, some of you may not have to imagine. Some of you may work in a, at a fast food uh, restaurant or in a grocery store. In the register, all you have are nine $10 bills, nine $1 bills, and nine dimes. So here are your questions. What's the largest amount of change that you can give someone? What's the smallest amount of change that you could give someone? And what would you do if someone needed seven cents in change? All right, pause the video and come up with answers to these questions at this time. Okay, so um, the largest amount of change that you can give someone, well, that would be all the money that you have, right? So we would just add this together, nine $10 bills, nine $1 bills, and nine dimes. Uh, and so the largest amount of change that you can give someone is $99.90. The smallest amount, well, the smallest amount would just be one dime, right? So 10 cents would be the least amount of change that you could give someone. Which begs the question, what would you do if someone needed seven cents in change? Right? Well, you couldn't do it because you don't have a way to divvy that up into seven cents. Right? Let's talk about how, how all of this relates to binary. So here's our activity, first activity for the day. So for this activity, you need the binary odometer, which is on the code.org website, which I will uh, pull up on the screen here in just a moment. Uh, the Flippy Do Pro template, which is linked on Google Classroom. If you do not have access to a printer at home, just copy this template uh, down onto a sheet of paper. Uh, scissors to finish off your Flippy Do and your journal. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is navigate to level two in lesson five and play with the odometer to figure out how it works. Now this is what it looks like here. Okay, So you should be in lesson five and part two, level two for lesson five. So just play around with this, take take a couple minutes, pause the video here and uh, play around with it and see see what you get. Okay, hopefully you had a little fun playing around with that uh, widget. Um, and watching the numbers kind of tick up. Um, I'm going to give you a challenge now to tackle with the binary odometer, and I want you to write your response in your journals. So here's your first challenge. And again, there will be several today, but here's your first challenge. Remember, record this in your journal. I want you to set the odometer to the highest number possible, and then hit the Start button, right? and write down what happens. So again, set the, set the odometer to the highest number possible, and then hit Start and see what happens. Take a moment, do that, and then come back to the video. Okay, so what happens? What happens to the odometer reading, right? Does the odometer still show the distance driven by the car when we do that? So if we set it up to max and then hit start, you probably noticed it doesn't keep going, it resets, and we get this overflow message. So no, um, the odometer starts to become inaccurate. It's run out of space to keep track of the data. All right, so now we want to make our Flippy Do Pro. Uh, you'll notice that it looks very similar to your original Flippy Do. Uh, the only difference is that this one has been uh, built to include uh, uh, decimals, decimal values. Uh, instead of just whole numbers. Uh, so follow the instructions on this slide. Pause the video if you need to. Again, the link for this, uh, for the resource for this is on Google Classroom. If you have access to a printer, print that out. If not, just use a sheet of uh, notebook paper and uh, draw this grid. Okay. All 
All right, once you have finished making your Flippy Do Pro, um, I have a series of challenges here. And again, I want you to record your answers to all of these in your journal. So, challenge number one. I want you to make the smallest non-zero number possible in binary with your Flippy Do Pro. And then what is the decimal equivalent, right? So what is what is the number up here that it translates to? Take a moment, pause the video, and answer that question in your journal. Okay, so you may have been able to figure that one out pretty quickly. Uh, the smallest non-zero number, we would just turn up the first digit here, right? Instead of 000, 000, 000, 000 it would be 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 1, right? Um, and the decimal equivalent would be, for our Flippy Do Pro here, would be 0 0.25. All right. Next challenge. I want you to increase the number that you made in challenge one to the next value with your Flippy Do Pro, and then figure out what the decimal equivalent to that is. Okay, so pause the video and write again, write this answer down in your journal. Okay, so to make the next value, we would move to the next space, right? Uh, and flip that one up. So the next value in binary is 000, 000, 000, 10. Okay. And the decimal equivalent, of course, is 0.5, right, or 0 0.50. Challenge three. Now we can finally do quarters here, right? Make the binary equivalents of 0 0.25, 0 0.50, and 0 0.75. Again, take a moment, write down the answers to this in your journal, and then return to the video. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, the first two probably should be pretty easy because we just did them in challenges one and two, right? So to convert 0 0.25, we just flip this up right and then write down our answer uh, and then binary for uh, 0.5 was the same way we would just go to 0.5 and only flip that one up it can get tricky with 0.75 right so how do we make 0.75 well we add 0.5 and 0.25 so we need to flip both of these up to show that we're adding them together right so binary for 0.75 would be 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 Challenge number four, and again, record the answer to this in your journal. Make all the values of change fractional that you can with your Flippy Do Pro. Okay, so make all the all the values of change that you can with your Flippy Do Pro. There will be some that you can't, right? And then check and see, can you make the binary number for 39 cents, which is 0.39 as a decimal? Again, pause the video, answer that question, answer those questions. Uh, and then hit play. Okay, so you may have noticed that there were no additional uh, values that you could create to make change other than the ones we've already done, right? 25 cents, 50 cents, and 75 cents. Okay, you can't make the uh, you can't make 0.39 a binary number because it doesn't fit in in our Flippy Do Pro. So this is called a round-off error, right? A round-off error occurs when an exact value cannot be made with available place values, right? So if we can't if we can't make it with our current Flippy Do or our current number system, we call that a round-off error. And just to use a real world example here, if you, you may have run out of change in your cash register, right? Someone needed nine cents, but you only had uh, a nickel and two pennies. So what do you do? Well, typically uh, what, what you would do is you would round up to the next one, right? So you would just round up to a dime if you had a dime. 
All right, challenge number five. Uh, and again, record the answer to this in your journal. What is the largest number in decimal that you can make with the Flippy Do Pro? And again, pause the video and answer the question and then come back. Okay, so the largest number in decimal you can make with the Flippy Do Pro or with any Flippy Do is whatever number is added when you when you flip up all the ones, right? So if you flipped up all the ones, right, and your your Flippy Do uh, or your binary number was one 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 one, and you added those values together, you should get sixty three point seven five. So that is the max amount that we can hit before uh, we hit an overflow error. All right, challenge number six, how much pi? And again, don't forget to record this in your journal. Use a Flippy Do Pro to determine how much pi is left at the end of dessert. For each pi, make a decision on how you want to round the number to fit on the Flippy Do, Flippy Do Pro. Write this number down in your journal. Okay, so your first pi, and there will be, uh, there will be a handful of these, so make sure you label. Pi number one is pumpkin. Uh, look at this orange slice and estimate how big it is, right, in decimal form, right? Do you think it's do you think it's an eighth or a sixth or two thirds or what have you? Okay? And then use your Flippy Do Pro to represent how big the orange slice is. Now this is important. You may need to round up or down. Remember you only have the place values on the Flippy Do Pro. So if you think it's a third, you need to decide to round up to 0.5 or down to 0.25. And then, once you've done that, convert your binary number to a decimal number. And then write down that number in your journal. Okay, and I'm going to go through all these pretty quickly, but pause the video after each pi um, to, uh, to write your answers down in your journal. So pi number two is cherry. Again, same thing. Estimate how big this slice is. Use your Flippy Do Pro to represent how big the red slice is, and keep in mind you may need to round up or down. Convert your binary number to a decimal number, and write down the number in your journal. Same thing for pi number three. Look at this slice here. Okay. Estimate how how big you think that is. Right? You think that's a third, two thirds, a quarter, what have you? And then use your Flippy Do Pro to represent how big the yellow slice is. You may need to round up or down. Again, I'm going to keep highlighting that. You're almost certainly going to need to round up or down. Which way you round is your choice. Convert your binary number to a decimal number, and then write down that number in your journal. And then pi number, this is pi number three. I think that's a typo. Yeah, so pi number four is chocolate. Look at this here. Estimate what you think that is. Convert it into from binary to decimal, and write down that number in your journal. Okay. And I know I went through that pretty quickly. Again, just pause the video and answer the questions before moving on. Okay, so how much pi is left given uh, given what we've what we've just calculated here? Add all the decimal numbers that you just listed up together, and this part we're gonna. We're going to skip, obviously, because we're working from home. You don't need to compare with a partner. But take all the decimal numbers for pi's 1 through 4 and add them together and see what you got, what number you got. So your rounding may look similar to the answers below, right? So for me, this looks like a sixth, right? And I think that's like point, I don't know, point 0.17. I don't have a calculator on me. Uh, but this looks like a sixth to me. So I would calculate that it's 0.17. Now you can't do 0.17 in in our uh, flippy do, right? Because we don't have a way to represent that. So you probably would have rounded up to 0.25. And so once you did that, your binary would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.001. Okay. Same thing here, right? This looks like a third to me. So um, some of you may have gone, okay, that's a third, so that's 0.33. And some of you may have rounded down to 25. Others of you may have rounded up to 0.5. There's no, there's no wrong answer here, right? 
some people may have, for this one, may have said that's super small and rounded down to zero, and so their decimal zero and their binary zero. And then some people may have looked at this and gone, okay, that's a third as well, let's round that up to a half. Okay. So if, we, if you did everything on here and you added up your, uh, your answers, you would have gotten 1.25. So that means that 1.25 pies are left over. Now, your answer may be a little different depending on how you round it up or down. If you didn't have to round it all, right, in a perfect world where we didn't have to round at all, we could represent 0.33 and 0.17. If you did not have to round at all, you would see that exactly one whole pi is left over. So not 1.25, like on the previous slide, but one pi. So some food for thought here. Why is it a problem for a computer if your answers are different than others? Right? Why might that be an issue? So think about that, pause the video, and come back. So an answer to this prompt is that computers rely on precision. You know, think of a calculator. Uh, we depend on 1 plus 1 always equaling 2. If, if sometimes it equaled 2 and sometimes it equaled 1.25, the calculator wouldn't be very useful. Um, so rounding is necessary because we're limited in the number of bits that we have in any given system, but this is always going to lead to errors. Okay, let's wrap up. So the most important takeaway from this lesson is to understand that bits can represent a limited amount of information. Remember the previous lesson I said with if you had um, uh, two signals, you you could communicate the the what you could communicate is unlimited, but it's only limited by the amount of storage that you have to store all those bits. So that's kind of what we were getting into today. All right. Um, so here are, here are a few prompts here. Write the answers to these in your uh, in your journal. So what does the binary odometer show about representing large numbers? What does the Flippy Do Pro show about representing very small numbers? And if we had a big enough odometer or Flippy Do Pro, could we represent every possible number? And again, we won't discuss those in this video. Write your answers down to those in your journal. So with a fixed number of bits, computers can only represent a fixed set of numbers. Okay, so if we had unlimited bits, we could represent unlimited numbers, but um, with a fixed number, uh, with a fixed number of storage, we can only represent a fixed set of numbers. So two terms today that we that that we ran into, um, and jot these down in your journal. So an overflow error, that's an error from attempting to represent a number that is too large. That is what happened when we worked with the binary odometer and we ran the we ran the uh, the the settings up to max settings and then hit start. Right, we had an overflow error. There wasn't enough space to store the next piece of information, so we had an overflow. And then a round-off error, those are the errors that we were exploring with our flippy do pros. That's an error from attempting to represent a number that is too precise, so the value is rounded. right? So when we had like 0.17 and we had to decide to round up to 0.25, that is a round-off error. And then that's going to do it for um, today's lesson. Don't forget to fill out the, uh, complete the remainder of the uh, sections on uh, code.org. Uh, next time we'll talk about, we'll move kind of away from numbers and we'll talk about representing text in, uh, in a computer. Uh, have a great day and we'll see you next time.